Stories are acts of providence. My name is Asa Dumebi, and every week, I usually tell you a short story written by a Nigerian writer or author. But, in celebration of the first year anniversary of this podcast, I'm launching Series Week, where I tell you stories over the course of two or seven consecutive days. Basically, however long it takes to complete the story. Series Week will occur about once a quarter, and the stories featured will still be written by Nigerian writers and authors and will either consist of a sequence of related episodes from one story or a set of stories linked by a common theme. That's the long and short of it. So without much ado, today's story is from the Lagos Uber Stories Collection by Joshua Owelabi, and it's titled Life's Bitter, Life's Sweet. Listen in tomorrow for another episode. I got in and we exchanged pleasantries. I don't remember what I asked, but the moment he started telling me about himself, I didn't want him to stop. It wasn't easy growing up. My parents gave birth to me and seven others and sent us to school. Once we were done with secondary school, they were also done with sending us to school. (laughs) It was time for us to take charge of our lives. I was the first child, so the responsibility was on my head. The step I took after secondary school education mattered to my siblings and more so to my parents. I wrote jam, and to my surprise, I did not pass. Not like if I had passed, I would have gone to university. It was more of climbing stairs without knowing if you could make it to the top. After getting my results, I knew there was no way I could stay home for another year. Who will feed me and my siblings? <laughs> you might say, but I have parents. Yes, we do. But they had retired already. And I don't blame them. I know how they struggled to care for us from the day they gave birth to us until we finished secondary school. We were not expecting anything from them after that. As the first child... I left my village and went to Nicha to join one of my people. I was lucky to join one store where we sell provisions. I was there for eight good years, until one of my friends living in Ibadan reached out to me. He asked me how I was doing, and I told him. He then asked me to send my account details, which I did. Next thing, I got an alert, 20,000 naira. He then told me to come to Ibadan immediately. I couldn't travel that day, but I went the next day. When I got to Ibadan, my friend took me to the polytechnic and he bought me a prelim form. I wrote the exam and I passed excellently. You see, eh? We are book smart in my family. Even though my parents never saw the inside walls of a classroom. I got admission to study engineering. A personal favorite since I was a child. It was like a dream come true. After my HND, I thanked my friend and relocated to Lagos. I applied for postgraduate studies at Unilag and I got admission. By that time, I was married and my wife was pregnant with our first child. Then, this one professor had an issue with me being the oldest person in his class and not being fully attentive. I was always absent-minded that time because my wife was pregnant and I didn't know how to handle the hospital bills and other financial needs that were mounting up. One day, I was caught with my mind adrift again and this professor sent me out of his class. As I was about to leave, while begging him, he asked me if I was meant to be in his class in the first place. I told him that I had passed the exam to get in. He still asked me to leave his class, but told me that I should come to his office later. I arrived at his office about an hour or so later. And after I explained why I was so absent-minded, 
He asked me to rewrite the entrance exam and he made me an offer. If I passed, he would employ me as his assistant. If I did not pass, he would write a recommendation to the university for my admission to be revoked due to poor academic performance. <laughs> that was enough motivation for me. I sat down and wrote the exam there and then, and I waited outside while he marked my papers. He was surprised with my results. He kept his word, and I became his assistant for the remainder of my master's. He was a very good man. He paid me a salary of over a hundred thousand naira monthly, and I had enough to support my young family. He died last year, God rest his soul. And with his death, my appointment was terminated. The other professors already had assistants, and there was nowhere else to reassign me within the university. Or so I was told. So last year, I bought my car and started Rupa. I have been on this grind ever since, and I'm grateful to everyone God has sent to help me in this life journey. Like this one guy, who sends me money whenever I tell him my wife gave birth. We randomly met on Facebook a few years ago. We hit it off, and we have stayed in contact ever since. When my wife and I had our first child, I mentioned it in passing. Next thing, he sent me 200,000 naira. I was surprised. I only know this guy from Facebook. Oh. We've never met in person. All I know is that he lives in Malaysia, and he has some family here in Nigeria. He did it again when we had our second daughter. We were having one of our catch-ups, and I just mentioned it in passing. Nah, we have our bundle of joy. God don't do him again. He replied and said, God is good. I did not share the news because he sent me money the first time. In fact, I almost did not tell him about the new baby, but not telling him would have felt somehow. It was a moment when we were just sharing general family updates. He was telling me about his family, you know, what was going on, how everybody was. And it just felt natural telling him. He sent us money again. And we moved it in an account we created for our baby. God has been really good to me. And he has sent people to help me along the way. I've been trying to find another job, but it has been difficult. You know, the country is about getting opportunities generally. Nigeria is about connection and who brought you into the system. In fact, you have to stay loyal to the person that brought you in if you want to continue feeding. I don't have such people in my life right now. So I have had to focus on what I have, my car and my family. It is one of the reasons why I have not returned to Unilag to collect my certificate since I finished my master's. What's the point? I haven't seen a reason to go and collect it, so I left it with them until there's a need for it. Till then, I am glued to this steering wheel, which keeps giving me more than enough to be grateful for. Joshua Owolabi is a writer who resides in the United Kingdom. He is a content marketing manager for tech and non-tech companies. You can read more of his work on Medium at Joshua Owolabi and connect with him on Twitter at This Is Ayomi. Details and links will be in the episode description. If you've got a story you would like to be featured on this podcast or a published book you want to make into an audiobook, send an email to info at osadumebi.com or send me a message at osadumebi on either Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. I look forward to collaborating with you. And if you've enjoyed this week's episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and tell a friend that stories are a good escape for a few minutes each week.